Now, I said that a lot of the shamanic initiatory rituals seem to be associated with the use of hallucinogenic drugs. And so the most common ones that we know about are mushrooms. So, for example, there's this mushroom, which many of you have probably seen in fairy tales, right? That's on the cover of fairy tales very frequently. And that's called an Amanita muscaria mushroom. And it's generally viewed as extremely toxic. And there's some, there's some reason for that, because it can, it can make the people who eat it very sick. And now and then people do die from it. But mostly it's extraordinarily hallucinogenic. The Vikings, for example, this is quite a terrifying story. The Vikings used to take Amanita muscaria mushrooms before they went on their pillaging trips. And they used the mushrooms to transform themselves into the equivalent of predatory monsters. So they usually, their, their sort of target was wolves or bears. And the, the word berserk, which is what the Vikings used to go, meant bear shirt. And so they would train their young men to eat these hallucinogenic mushrooms and turn themselves into pain-free predators. And then they would take them before they went on a pillaging raid. And so you just imagine, you know, you're sitting there in northern England and you're in your village and it's all peaceful and these bloody, crazy Vikings come all the, out of the ocean and the boats, you know, the open boats that they've traveled across the North Sea in, and they're all like stoned out of their gourd on Amanita muscaria mushrooms and all convinced that they're like predatory bears and that's exactly how they're acting and they have no pain whatsoever and it's like, <laughs> that's not a good scene. That's not a good scene, you know, and the Vikings come through and they just destroy everything. It's like, so that's their use. They were used for martial purposes by the Vikings. What you just heard is an excerpt from a Jordan Peterson lecture. I may not see eye to eye with Peterson on religion or politics or agree with some of his more controversial statements, but I have enjoyed his academic lectures in the past, and I believe I still even have a playlist of them on my YouTube channel. That being said, there have been a couple of times where I've encountered Peterson making certain eyebrow-raising claims during the course of a lecture. One example you may have heard of is when Peterson tried to claim that ancient imagery depicting intertwined snakes, such as the caduceus, were representations of the DNA double helix. A number of people criticized his claim and were quick to point out that the phenomenon of snakes intertwining while mating is the more probable, albeit admittedly more mundane, genesis of such imagery. But seeing as others have already competently tackled that matter, what I wanted to talk about today is Peterson's claim that Norse berserkers use the psychoactive mushroom, Amanita muscaria, to enter their legendary rages. As someone long fascinated by Norse myth and culture, I thought it would make a fun and exciting show topic. And I should say up front that in fairness to Peterson, although he may not necessarily be right, he may not necessarily be wrong either. How's that for equivocation? What I mean by that is my problem isn't necessarily with the idea that Viking berserkers may have used Amanita muscaria to help induce their rages. It's a suggestion that's been around for a while. And although it hasn't been ruled out, it hasn't been proven either. It's still a matter of contention. My problem is more with the certainty with which Peterson makes the claim during his lecture, even going as far as to paint a picture of Viking ships landing on the English shore, chock full of mushroom-stoned marauders. So perhaps I should offer a little more information on Amanita muscaria. As stated earlier, it's a psychoactive mushroom. Joran Peterson is correct when he sort of links it to fairy stories. You can find lots of vintage art online featuring whimsical depictions of gnomes and or fairy folk resting on or under or frolicking around the familiar toadstool with its iconic red and white spotted cap. It's also known as fly amanita or fly agaric due to its traditional use as a sort of pesticide or fly trap when sprinkled in milk. Although belonging to a highly poisonous genus, supposedly deaths from amanita muscaria are extremely rare. Originally native to temperate and boreal regions of the northern hemisphere, Amanita muscaria would eventually become a cosmopolitan species. This is at least in part due to its symbiotic spores making their way into the southern hemisphere via tree plantations. Some might argue that the fungus's widespread global presence, or penchant for getting around, may lend a grain of credibility to a fringe theory that I previously covered on the show.
Far more fringe than the suggestion that the Vikings may have consumed Amanita muscaria. The late John Marco Allegro, an English archaeologist and Dead Sea Scroll scholar, proposed that Christianity may have actually started out as a kind of mushroom fertility cult, with a psychoactive mushroom, perhaps Amanita muscaria, serving as the central sacrament. If you're interested in hearing more about that controversial topic, I just re-released that episode in the audio-only podcast feed, or you can search for it in my YouTube archive. The title, aptly enough, is Was Jesus a Mushroom? But now that I've given you some of the background on Amanita muscaria, who were the legendary berserkers, and could they have realistically used Amanita muscaria to enter their famous battle rages? The word berserker, or bersark, the source of our modern word berserk, is thought to translate to bear shirt, a reference to the fact that these warriors supposedly wore the pelts of animals, such as bears, into battle. There was also the ulfhadnar, or wolf coats. This proposed etymology of the word is widely accepted, but it's still not entirely without debate. Renowned 13th century Icelandic poet, historian, and politician Snorri Sturluson, the author of the Prose Edda, interpreted the bur or bear prefix with one r in contrast to bear, b e r r, meaning ursus or bear, to mean without, indicating that the warriors went into battle bare chested. The berserkers' battle frenzy was so fierce that they were said to be rendered temporarily immune to certain forms of bodily damage, howled like wild animals, and slew indiscriminately. Snorri Sturluson writes the following, His, Odin's men, rush forwards without armor, were as mad as dogs or wolves, bit their shields, and were strong as bears or wild oxen and killed people at a blow, but neither fire nor iron told upon them. This was called Berserker Gang. The first one to suggest that Berserkers may have used Amanita muscaria to induce their battle rages was a Swedish 18th century professor named Samuel Odman. He supposedly came up with the theory after hearing reports of Amanita muscaria use among Siberian shamans or shamans. So what exactly are the effects of Amanita muscaria? Usually when we think of psychoactive mushrooms, the active ingredient psilocybin comes to mind. But the active ingredients of Amanita muscaria are ibotenic acid and muscimol. The mushroom is usually parboiled prior to consumption in order to weaken its natural toxicity. Generally, Amanita muscaria is said to act as a mild relaxant, but the purported effects run the gamut. Depressant, sedative, hypnotic, dissociative, psychedelic, and or deliriant, sometimes even bringing about paradoxical effects. Despite its relative popularity, Odman's theory still amounts to little more than speculation. A competing theory based on the exhumation of Viking remains from a grave near Firecat, Denmark, back in the 1970s is henbane. Rubbing the crushed petals on one's skin can supposedly induce a numbing effect and even a quote-unquote mild sensation of flying. One substance we know for sure was popular among the Vikings is good old alcohol. But even then, we don't know if and how it may have been incorporated into berserker ritual. One theory that seems highly plausible to me, and is something that may have even been coupled with the ritual consumption of alcohol or other substances, is that the berserker frenzy or rage state may have been the result of a kind of self-induced hysteria, a state of hyper-arousal, perhaps incorporating belief in spirit possession, in this case the spirit of the particular totem animal of the berserker. One can imagine the individual being guided along into the state through common ritual elements such as repetitive rhythmic motion, music, drumming, etc., but at the end of the day, even this is speculation. Well, I guess that brings this episode to a close. I guess thanks to Jordan Peterson for giving me an excuse to cover this topic. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and as always, thanks for listening.